I have Hit a me with it. different kind of crime. Violent, gentle, and very sophisticated. Kind of like me. Was it British? Because this is about California, friend. This one that I'm going to talk about takes place in the height of LA's heat days. Ooh. Heat again. Movie. But things are starting to change, and with bank security becoming more sophisticated, like we talked about Armored car holdups were becoming more common rather than going into a bank. So this one, it was an inside job, and it was the largest armed takeover cash robbery ever in U.S. history. The Dunbar Armored Facility Western Regional Headquarters is at 676 Mateo Street. It's in that like industrial area mm-hmm, downtown area. where nothing is, yeah, except places to rob. Arch district now, yeah, yeah. The arts and heist <laughs> district. <laughs> That's why they're there. There's no <laughs> art district. We're all here for banks. So in the mid '90s, a 28 year old guy from Compton named Alan Pace mm-hmm. was the regional safety inspector at this facility. So his duties were to make sure the conditions and workers were being safe, and that all the fire extinguishers were full. So part of his job was to take pictures of the compound and of employees to document what was going on. For whatever reason, eventually Pace got it in his head to want to rob the place. Mm -hmm. So he knew nobody would question his activities inside the complex. So he started being more precise and calculating with what he was taking pictures of, including all of the security equipment and all of the key personnel. And nobody minded because that was his job. Mm -hmm. So eventually, he had an entire map of every single aspect of the Dunbar facility, all the way down to where the security tapes were being held Mm -hmm. and what each security camera was pointing at and the intervals at which each of them would pan from side to side and for how long. So he had recruited five of his childhood friends who were all bouncers and rent-a-cops to be his team for this heist. And they were a really tight group of friends, and they all swore to stick together no matter what. He coached them relentlessly on the layout of the facility and on exactly what each one of them should do during and after the heist. So around the office at work, Pace was friendly with everyone, and he was known as something of a prankster. Oh, boy. He would unscrew taillights on the (laughs) trucks, and he would report his coworkers for safety violations, (laughs) and they would all laugh. Silly beans. As their children could no longer be fed because they were suspended. (laughs) So eventually his pranks started getting on somebody's nerves Mm -hmm. and he got fired for tampering with one of the trucks. Oh boy. So he figured now it was time to pull off his funniest prank yet (laughs) to rob all of them at gunpoint. (laughs) (laughs) That night, September 12th, 1997, he and his five friends went to a party in Long Beach to set up their alibi. So after a few hours, all the guys left, and they met, and they changed into their robbery costumes. Mm -hmm. What are you going to (laughs) be? A dinosaur. (laughs) They put on their stuff, they picked up a U-Haul, and they headed downtown. When they got there, Pace knew that one of the security operators had just gotten a new truck. So he had repositioned one of the security cameras to face his parked car out front so he could always look at it. So Pace knew this is the door that we can easily slip by because it's looking at this guy's car. Right. They got there. The door was locked. But luckily, Pace still had his entrance key. So he just unlocked the door. Mm-hmm. And at 12.30 a.m. September 13th, he let everyone in. So they skirted around the cameras. They made their way into the break room. And they ambushed the guards one by one as they came by. And they tied them up with duct tape. Mm-hmm. Once most of the employees were taken out, they knew that... All that was left was whoever was guarding and operating the vault. Also, they had to figure out how to get into the vault. (laughs) (laughs) Was that not worked out in the picture? (laughs) Fortunately, it was Friday night, and Pace knew that on Friday nights, there was so much cash being moved out of the vault to be put into ATMs around the city to get ready for the weekend that they just left the vault open. Wow. So they rushed the vault, tied up all the employees, opened up the gates outside for the U-Haul to come in. They broke open the cages inside the vault that were filled with sacks of 20s that were meant for all the ATMs. Uh So Pace knew which stacks of cash were for which deliveries, and he took only the ones that he knew had the largest amounts of money, and also the ones that were not made out of fresh bills, because the fresh bills would have been sequentially numbered, and they would be easy to trace. Right, okay. So they stacked all the cash into the U-Haul, creating a pile of money that went up to their thighs. Oh, my God. (laughs) But Pace wasn't, he wasn't done yet. They smashed up the security cameras. He took all the security tapes that had been recorded, and then they all piled into the van, and they drove it somewhere far away 
changed their clothes, and went back to the party in Long Beach. The robbers, they had been armed with handguns and shotguns, but not a single shot was fired. Mm -hmm. All in all, the robbery took 34 minutes, and they made off with $18.9 million. Oh. It was executed so perfectly, nobody could ID any of the robbers, there were no fingerprints, and even though that they had had an entry key, they forced entry into a few doors just to throw off the investigators. The only thing that got left behind was a tiny piece of yellow glass from the taillight of the U-Haul that accidentally got smashed when they were loading up the cash. So the investigators, just by luck, saw the piece of glass in the loading area, and they recognized it that it didn't belong to any of the Dunbar trucks, and they sent it to the forensics lab. It was determined by the lab to have come off a 14-foot-long U-Haul truck. It was a great piece of evidence, but it meant nothing, because there were no U-Haul renters under Pace's name, so the case went cold. So then after the robbery, most of the cash got stashed in a public storage facility in Gardena. Mm -hmm. The robbers kept minimal contact with each other in case they were being watched, mm -hmm. which they were. And Pace, was, he was a suspect from day one, and he was being closely monitored by the FBI, but he and his friends stuck to laying low and not spending anything lavishly. Meanwhile, Dunbar put up a $25,000 reward, and their insurer, Lloyds of London, put up an additional $100,000. The FBI called this Operation Dunrob. After a while, things cooled off and they wanted their money, so they set up a company called Extreme Entertainment that rented out jet skis and limos and stuff like that through which they could launder their money. How, how subtle. <laughs> Golden jet skis. <laughs> they also spread out the wealth through real estate deals, but they came across one stack of the cash that they took on accident that was sequentially numbered, mm -hmm. so they tried to burn it but apparently money doesn't burn very easily. So they went to Las Vegas, but they found that all the crisp new bills were jamming in the slot machines. So they put the money in washing machines to crinkle them up mm -hmm. so that they would work. And they spent a few hundred thousand dollars on slot machines this way. Oh my God. All this went on for two years and it looked like everything was going great until one of the men that committed the robbery, Eugene Lamar Hill Jr., decided to get a middleman to buy him some property so that it wouldn't be in his name. It was an okay plan, but Hill forgot to take off the straps holding the stacks of cash together, and the middleman saw this and he reported it to the police. Oh, the man. numbers on the straps were recognized as those from the robbery. A quick search showed that Hill had rented a 14-foot U-Haul truck the day before the robbery <sighs> and had returned it the day after. They quickly arrested him, and just as quickly, he gave all the names of everyone oh, else involved in the robbery. The five men Pace hired got sentences varying from 7 to 17 years. Pace himself, who insisted he had nothing to do with the robbery, got 24 years and two months, and they have to pay back all of the money. Uh. The police recovered about $5 million in the form of homes and cars, but there's still over $10 million that is still accounted for out there, and nobody but these six men know where it is. So there's buried treasure somewhere out there. Oh, let's keep looking. And now this story is Dunbar. <laughs> <laughs> that leads almost perfectly into my story because that story, like, the danger of having friends. <laughs> <laughs> Which we know all too well. <laughs> what a fun story that was. It's super heisty. It was very heisty. It's very heisty. And if it wasn't for that meddling piece of glass <laughs> from the U-Haul. Who picks middlemen? It was like, oh, well, I'm going to say something. He could have walked away with some money. But no, he had to be squeal mouth. If anyone gives you any money ever, you report them. Oh, yeah, definitely. I reported my grandma so many times. <laughs> if 